I want to welcome to the show, Rebecca George. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you so much for having me, Melissa. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you here. We were chatting before we hit record and I, I have followed you for years and we're friends on all the things and all yeah. the places. So it just, I, I see your content. I see your heart. And I was like, I just need to grab her and get her on the show. And we're going to have a conversation today about rejection. And I know you are writing a book or have mm-hmm. written that book. And so that's not out yet, but I'm curious what prompted your heart to that really big, hard topic of rejection. Yeah. So I do talk about rejection in the book for reasons that we'll talk about today, because it's something that we all experience. And I was writing about pursuing our calling and our purpose, which seems like such a big audacious thing (laughs) to so many of us Yeah. when in reality, so many times God is just asking us to take one step of faithfulness after another. And sometimes that involves rejection. And so I couldn't leave that topic out. And I actually love how God sort of steered us towards having this conversation together. It was through an Instagram reel. It was, was it not? (laughs) Okay. I was telling a friend this morning, (laughs) I said, there's so many times in the work that we do, whether it's creating content online on Instagram or our websites or our podcasts, where you just feel like you're throwing things at a wall and seeing what sticks. Right. (laughs) And I remember thinking, you know, I want to start talking about this more. And I, so I told a friend, I said, just so we all know that there are moments where we will create something and we'll wonder if God's going to use it. And I'm having a conversation on a friend's podcast today about a topic that I talked about in an Instagram reel. So (laughs) things do translate. And so anyway, I'm just really excited to have this conversation with you because whether it be in our personal lives, our professional lives, we all experience rejection in different forms. It can crush us. And we like that even the title of your podcast, we have to navigate, how do we thrive and see God's goodness in the midst of it? And so that's the conversation I'm just really excited to have today, because I think this is just such a relatable topic that we can all, I don't know, just really, really relate to. So I'm excited. Yeah, to be here. Me too. I am as well. And I think it's one of those topics that we experience as people, Mm-hmm. but we don't really share it. And so it can feel like mm-hmm. everybody else has it together, mm-hmm. but we hold our rejections in, we internalize it and it can really isolate us. And so comparison fits in and all these different factors. And so I'm curious, you know, when you think about rejection, what are, what are the things that comes to your mind in regards to our calling and our purpose and even our relationships? Yeah, this is so good. And you, you touched on it when you said we look around at other people's lives and all of the pretty shiny things that we tend to share openly and publicly when many times what's going on behind the curtain is a totally different story. Yeah. And I think if we would remember that as we spend hours of our lives scrolling content that was perfectly curated that'd be a good place to start the conversation, <laughs> right? Totally. Because so many times I know, even, even in my own life, and we talked about this offline, I just moved. I am recording this podcast from my kitchen table. Everything about my life right now feels upended. And also I am prepping for a book launch and my husband and I were serving in a new church and my husband's a pastor. And so there's a lot of joy in this season And there's a lot of confusion and figuring life out in this season. Am I going to share all of that online? No. Right. Right. Because a lot of that I'm processing through with the Lord. And so while that's not a specific, you know, rejection example, everybody that's listening to this podcast could give the same both and that's existing in their own lives. And so I think if we remember that everybody that, we're looking to online is experiencing that both and type of thing where they may be experiencing rejection that they're not sharing. We might be looking at their content and saying, Oh, they have 
they have the boyfriend, they have Mm -hmm. the book deal, they have whatever it is that we're longing for, or we feel, you know, that we've experienced rejection in that area. Um, I think that's a good place to start, but it's also not going to transform our hearts on a Tuesday. Right. right? And so I think the, the deep end conversation of this is how do we see God's goodness in the midst of it? Right. Because what we're feeling as we experience rejection is this longing for something that God has most, most often probably put on our hearts Yeah, from probably some of the biggest buckets that, you know, everybody's thinking of is, is marriage, having children, taking that next step in your career. And when we pursue those things, sometimes we have false starts and (laughs) rejected in, in some sort of way. Sometimes we take a step, God teaches us something, but in that we experience rejection. Yeah. Sometimes we experience rejection for God to redirect us in another area. And it's mo- mo- most often really hard in the moment for us to see, ooh, that's how God's hand was at work. Ooh, right. that's how I can see his goodness in the midst of this. A lot of those things we see in hindsight and dare I even say some of those things we won't know till heaven. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's the part that I think we have a hard time with you. And I talked about that before we hit record, Mm -hmm. like how cool would it be or, you know, for one day for us to be able to say, Hey God, can I just like see the VHS tape (laughs) of like your great plan Mm -hmm. for, you know, redeeming, redeeming your, your own great story for your glory and our good and help me make sense of why this happened we, we don't get that right now. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think pointing ourselves back to the truth of who God is and that his character does not hinge on our circumstances and what's happening in our lives. That is one of the transformative things we can talk about this more that has really helped me walk through rejection is uh, many times I'll take a rejection to the Lord and say like, okay, God, help me make sense of my life circumstances. Here you go. Rather than starting with, okay, God, this is who I know you to be. Right. You are immutable. You are unchanging. You are sovereign, faithful, wise, and you have a plan at work in motion behind the scenes that I cannot see right now. And I trust you in that. So like, here's she's usually so good, but there's another okay. dog barking. Mine is too, and I'm just like waiting on him to like. Yeah. He's been great all morning, and I'm just crossing my fingers. So I'm gonna. She's such a pill because if I put her out, she'll scratch. Do you mind uh, just yeah. saying that again? I'm so sorry. No, you're good. Um. I lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. (laughs) The will of God and yes. I'm trying to think of where I want to start. Um, so I think the paradigm shift that we have to remember is God's character comes first. Our circumstances come second. Yeah. Right. And so if we lead with, this is who I know God to be. God, help me see you in the midst of this rejection. That's many times the transformative thing that I have to take myself through rather than going to God and saying, okay, here's this thing that happened that disappoints and crushes me. Help me make sense of it. Um, I have to start with who he is. Mm. And many times that really helps me walk through that rejection. Yeah, that's so good. I'm I'm hearing you say it's about establishing our foundation. Yeah. And as believers, if we have that steady, firm foundation of God, Mm -hmm. that really gives us such security and rest and not being alone, not feeling forsaken, not feeling shame. 
Yes. But also, I, I think you bring something really important into the conversation that I've never really thought about. And when we're feeling rejected, it's also a, a an indicator of what we're longing for. Yes. Because there are certain things that other people get, let's say like a boat or a private jet. I don't know anybody like with a private jet or anything, but yeah, you know, if they were to get that, I would care less. I, I would not oh, even totally. care. Like, yeah, I can't, I can't even afford probably the gas of that situation. Same. And so that doesn't bother me. But if somebody gets something that I long for or yeah. something that I long for gets taken away, then that gets rejected. And so I think when we have that foundation of like who God is, but also knowing, well, this is a really good desire. Yeah. That's, this is a God desire and it's not quite yet ready. I'm trying my hand at gardening right now. And it's a a colossal disaster. I'm growing watermelon and the watermelon is like taking over. And I finally have these like little baby watermelons one I, I opened it up this. was like white. There was no red in it. The other yeah. one was, I mean, it's just like crazy. Like, cause I have no idea when to pick it in the right season. Yeah. yeah. And so it's all coming up. I have to learn how to garden and I have to learn yes. about this crop. And I think that can be the way it is with our own heart. What What is it that we're even growing and cultivating? Yes. And when is the season of that? Yes. And I, I will, I'll just go ahead and say, First, I'm not the expert on this. I would point you to a book called That Sounds Fun by Annie F. Downs to talk a lot more about this concept. In her book, she talks about being an amateur. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we've lost the art of, right? With the online space and how we represent ourselves online, I think we feel this need to instantly be an expert in whatever we're doing. Right. And that's just not the human experience. (laughs) Yeah. When I went and, you know, I've commiserated over this a little bit when we went to our first writing conference, I don't know about you, but I thought I was ready to write a book then seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I was not. (laughs) And God had so much to teach me in and through that. I experienced rejection along the way, but that wasn't, a closed door in that instance, God yeah. was, was really prompting me and saying, Hey, this is the dream that I have put on your heart, but that does not mean that perseverance and a lot of learning and growing on your part is not required. And sometimes that's the case, right? Um, sometimes it's a redirection in another, in another direction. Sometimes it's a, Hey, be faithful. And it's not, it's a, not yet type of thing. And, and that's where I think we really have to lean into the Lord. And again, have that firm foundation to really discern and listen to the spirit and, and figure out, okay, what is it? Is it a timing thing? Is it a no, no for now? And it's going to come later type of thing. And, um, personal example of that. I can remember when I was still single before I married my husband, I had just an incredible mentor in my life. Her name is Gina. And she, she and I related a lot because she got married a little bit later, you know, than like 21, 22 years old. And and so as I was 27, when I got married and one verse that I pulled that I wanted to read today, because I think it can apply in so many of these areas that we're talking about in terms of rejection. It's Romans eight 32. She used to say this all the time to me. It says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Mm. And she, she would just repeat to me when I was having a hard day, she would say, he didn't spare his own son. He didn't spare his own son. And I think if we would remember that we serve a good God who gives his, he, he gives his kids good gifts that are going to bring him the most glory and us the most good in the right time and in the right way, the disappointment wouldn't crush us so much. Yeah. Right. Not, and it's not even necessarily having all the answers, but the knowing that God is at work behind the scenes in a way that we cannot understand because he is infinite and we are very, very, very finite. (laughs) Yeah. And, and again, pointing ourselves back to those truths, that is how I 
personally have walked through a lot of rejection and even disappointment. I think the rejection brings the disappointment, right? Mm, so it's, I, I think, too. I think we're talking about two sides of the same coin here, but when it comes and it will, I think that's the truth that we have to bring ourselves back to is he graciously gives us all things that will bring him the most glory and us the most good. He's a good father and he gives good gifts to his kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As you're sharing, I mean, I'm thinking about like how expectations lead to frustration and disappointment Yeah, and how much of our rejection, I wonder is really an unmet expectation or an unrealistic expectation. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm thinking about those like little moments where maybe we don't get invited to something that we feel like we should have, or somebody didn't do something for us that we feel like we should have. Mm. You know, I think there's like those Mm -hmm. little, maybe little R rejections and like big Mm -hmm. R rejections, like in terms of like a divorce or like an extramarital affair or things like that. So I'm I'm not putting that in this category, but I'm thinking about those little rejections that happen to us almost every day because yeah. d- I mean, day to day, somebody's going to hurt my feelings. Yeah. Something's going to not equal or add up to the way I feel like it quote should be. So I'm mm. curious on your thoughts on that, like in terms of like how expectations translate into maybe feeling rejected. Yes. Okay. This is so good. And I'm thinking more on a, on a personal level, I'll start there. I, I love can remember, personal levels. <laughs> yes. When I was still walking through that season of singleness, the thing that Gina, the, the mentor that I was mentioning, and I walked through and talked about a lot was the fact that my desire for marriage is God given right. Marriage is a gift from God. And that if he has put that on your heart and that's not something that you've experience yet or walked into yet. I think sometimes we can almost feel guilty mm-hmm. or a longing in our heart. And yeah. and I think that is, is the enemy trying to still kill and destroy what God has, has put in our hearts, a desire for children, a desire for marriage, the union that God created, that is a representation of of Christ and his bride, the church, that it's a beautiful thing. And that is not something that you need to feel guilty for an obsession with taking in content of people's wedding videos or engagement pictures, or maybe having to skip a bachelorette party because you just can't buy lingerie for a third time this month for somebody else. Like all those Mm -hmm. things are going to happen right along the way. And, and like you're saying, Sometimes in an inadvertent type of way, even something as small as going and buying a gift for a bachelorette party that's not your own can feel like a rejection, Mm. right? Because it's the thing that it's the longing that hasn't been fulfilled yet. And so sometimes, even if it's not a blatant rejection from, you know, a boyfriend breaks up with you or whatever, sometimes it can come across on a heart level as one of those little R rejections. I think you're onto something really good there because I think that's exactly what happens. It's kind of, kind of one of those death by a thousand cuts types of situation. Right. right? And I think that can, I just shared a personal example, but that can happen professionally, right. In, Mm -hmm. in any kind of arena. And, and I think that's maybe another layer of what crushes us because we're just so tired of having that unmet longing. And, um, I know for me putting some boundaries in place really helped me with that on a, on a personal level with dating, you know, if, if I'd had several friends get engaged or get married, or um, I'd been to, you know, my fair share of baby showers in, you know, a span of time. And, and I just, um, was really struggling with it. I would take some time away from social media. There's nothing Mm -hmm. wrong with that. When I would, you know, it's almost, I'm thinking about the, the area of fasting. So hang with me with the metaphor. When we, when we choose to not eat food and we experience hunger, that is a cue for us to do what? To turn to God in Mm -hmm. prayer and to surrender that longing 
and, and those feelings of hunger to him. And so in the same way, when we're experiencing rejection or we're feeling disappointment in an area where we have a longing that is God given, Mm -hmm. it is an opportunity for us to turn to him. And it's an up, it's an opportunity for us to abide in Christ on a deeper level. Um, as we remember, he graciously gives us all things and he's a good father and he gives good gifts to his Mm -hmm. kids that requires us turning back to him in those times where we're really struggling with that, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so good. I'm, I'm thinking in my own life too, whenever I have walked through just feeling so sensitive and hurt and relationships yeah. where I feel like friends should have done this for me or should have done that for me because I do that for them. I'm an Enneagram too. And one of my, uh, strengths on the strengths finder is connectedness and individuality. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can like, know, okay, Rebecca, like you're into this and you're going through this. And so I'm going to intuitively, you know, send you this type of flowers on, Mm -hmm. you know, this day, because that would really mean something for you. And when, when people wouldn't show up for me in the way I felt like they quote should, I felt rejected. And what was interesting with that is I pushed away people as a way of almost like rejecting them. So cliche before they, but we do it all the time, could reject me. And it just turns out as I was honest with people and saying like, Hey, that hurt my feelings in appropriate ways. They were able to say like, Oh, I did not even mean that. Like, here's what's going on in my life. And here's Mm -hmm. why I've been distant or here's what's going on. And Mm -hmm. so as I've grown and matured, I've had to learn this the hard way to recognize when am I feeling rejected and and, am I actually being rejected or is this like a rejection filter that I'm putting on the situation and this is my own hurt and unrealistic or realistic expectations that aren't being met. Yeah. I think that's so interesting to think about. And one of the things I love about personality tests is it teaches us about, they teach us about ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. A temptation that I see in them is I I often will see them excuse sin totally and sinful behavior patterns. Right. And so that's, that's something I always try to call out with it, whether it's the Enneagram Myers-Briggs, whatever it is, it is not an excuse for sin. Mm -hmm. It informs our, our motivators, our behavior and things like that. So in that, I think if we took a look at, you know, again, take your pick of, of personality tests, but you know, you've mentioned the Enneagram a couple of times. If we think about, okay, I'm a three, I'm married to an eight and your eyes just got really big. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all are both in the aggressive, uh, stance. (laughs) It is, it is a full house of, of emotions and drive and opinion and everything. And, you know, to your point, when we first got married, there were times where, and my husband would be totally fine with us saying this, he's talked about this from the pulpit before there are times where he would say something in a very direct way and like, he really meant it, but I didn't believe him. Right. And so I would walk away thinking, okay, that's what he said, but I wonder if he actually meant this. Mm. And there was one time in particular, we were living in a very small town in Mississippi at the time he was pastoring a church down there. I was about nine hours away from my family. And I really missed my family. I wanted to go home and and visit them. Um, But because of my job, it really made sense for me to kind of go weekend to weekend so that I wouldn't have to take vacation and work remotely up from their house. Details you don't need to know. Anyway, I, I felt guilty asking him, Hey, can I go see my family for a whole week? Right. That's but, but the whole reason I had to go is because of my job. And he kept saying, babe, like, that's fine. I don't care. I don't care if you go. And in my mind, I was like, okay, he doesn't care if I go, but is he actually, (laughs) does he actually care? And he's just not telling me that he cares Mm -hmm. because there are times when I'll put aside my own selfish desire to say like, I don't care. That's fine. In, in like a sacrificial type of way, Mm -hmm. but in the back of my head, I'm thinking, you care. I actually care. I'm just not telling you that I care. (laughs) And so 
even in our own marriage, we have had to work through that personality wise. And so that's, that's a personal example, but you know, for your listener, take your own personality and, and really extrapolate that out. And it probably will reveal some areas to you that might rub you the wrong way or Mm -hmm. might experience you to, or might, you might experience that disappointment in some type of way. And, and many times it's just because we're putting an expectation back to, back to that on someone else that is unfair for them. Mm -hmm. And I think so many times if we were to recognize that it gives us a little bit more empathy towards maybe our own experience and why we're feeling the way we're feeling and also more empathy for the other person Mm -hmm. who we're feeling that disappointment towards. Totally. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. And then for, to be like, well, this is the way God made me and that's a good way, Mm -hmm. but that may, I may not get that in that way back. Exactly. But they may love me from their own strengths and talents and love language. And how can I translate that? And how can I communicate that in a healthy way? Because I know for me personally, I've been rejected far less than how much I actually have felt or perceived rejection, Mm. both professionally Mm. and personally. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to discount the people who have truly been rejected because there's some like so hard and heavy things and, and maybe we'll get to that. So I'm not discounting that. I'm just talking about the rejections of like, are, are we really being rejected or are we having an unmet desire, which is a good thing, but trying to get it maybe out of due season or out of a due place. Mm -hmm. And then we're picking up that shame and wearing that shame. Yes. Yeah. And then that accumulates and when an actual maybe heart wrenching rejection comes, it absolutely destroys us. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think if we can learn how to navigate some of those little R rejections, like you're talking about, I think you're onto something there. That could be a book. Um, I think we're in a better position also when we experience real, true, actual, truly hard rejection, which I'm happy to talk about. I Mm -hmm. think that's an important piece of this conversation. And I don't want to miss that because there are people listening who, who are experiencing that. I talked to a friend just this morning and that's her story to tell, but career wise just experienced a really, really crushing rejection. Um, she's in our industry and, um, and, and it's, and so it's, it's out there, it's happening to us. And, um, So yeah, I'm happy to talk about that too. Mm -hmm. I think the steps are the same, right? To establish our foundation in God. Yes. And then to identify our longings. But what would you add on to that, Rebecca, in terms of like maybe when, when we get fired or a project doesn't go through or we don't get promoted when we really feel that or, you know, don't get that job, that relationship ends because there's some such hard and heavy things that are going on each and every day. And, you know, there's no perfect one, two, three steps. No, there's not, but there are some monkey bars, if you will, to navigate through and to move us forward. Yes. I completely agree. I think one of the things that we've touched on, um, on kind of the periphery, but we've not explicitly talked about is the need for community. Yeah. I think so many times we experience something really tough like that. And because it feels so personal and it feels so close to the vest, there's a temptation to not share it and to not walk through it with other people. When community is, I mean, I think one of God's greatest gifts to us Mm -hmm. and and, and I'm including myself in that category. It's very easy for me to just decide I'm not going to share that with other people, or I'm not going to walk through that with somebody when, when I keep it in the dark, the enemy is very, can very easily get a foothold in my thought life and, um, can still kill and destroy the joy that God has given me. And, um, I think one of the greatest things we can do is pull in community to surround us in the midst of something Mm -hmm. hard like that. And not, not, not even necessarily a big group of people, but for instance, my friend and I, that, that talked earlier this morning, 
it would have been very easy for her to say, you know, I'm not going to reach out to Rebecca because Rebecca is right in the middle of launching a book and walking, we're, we're walking down a very similar path. And if I share my rejection with her, you know, is that going to make it feel even worse? But we, we had, we have enough relational equity for her to know, like, I am happy to sit in the pit of that with you because it's horrible. Right. Mm -hmm. And rejection stings and it hurts. And we need people to walk through that with us. And so not only do we have to seek those people out that can be a safe place for us when we're experiencing rejection, I also think we create an environment for that in our friendships. Mm -hmm. And, um, so there's a responsibility on our part. There have been moments with that same friend where I felt rejected and I felt safe to come to her and say, Hey, this stinks. Like, I just need to talk it out. And today I just need to be mad about it <laughs> tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll pick myself up and we'll move <laughs> on. But today mm -hmm. I'm mad about it. Mm -hmm. And I think because there was that level of honesty, she felt comfortable coming to me and sharing. And so I think we create that environment in our friendships and in our community. And I think that is something that we have to be willing. That's a step we have to be willing to take um, because God's likely surrounded you with some people who want to walk with you in those types of things. And um, sometimes it's, it's taking that first step and going first and saying, Hey, I, I just like really need to talk it out with somebody. Mm -hmm. And so I think community is probably other than the, the things we've already, the horses we've already beaten. I think that one <laughs> is one that is really, really, really crucial. I love that because I feel like when we share it with community, we aren't minimizing. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of us do. I think we either minimize what we're going through and try and make it feel very small or we flip to the opposite extreme and it becomes our complete identity. And we have yes. shame yes. and then that's so, that's so overwhelming and burdensome that we isolate and withdraw. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's like either one, I'm sure there's like other things in between, but when you look at what are the hallmark features, I'm mm -hmm. guessing I'm just using my own self as like a case study. I know that's what I'll tend to do is like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I don't need to tell anybody or oh my gosh, this is so big. I can't tell anybody because I feel so much shame yeah. and it's hard to face. Yes. Yeah. I completely agree. And I did an interview for my show the other day with Elisa Childers. I don't know if you're familiar with uh -huh. her. She was in the, I promise I'm circling this back around quickly. She was in the band Zoe girl. Do you remember okay. Zoe girl? No. Okay. It, it was real popular when I was a kid. Yeah. Anyway, she left Zoe girl and started doing apologetics work. And she's really just such an accessible voice for women to understand really deep conversations about theology and things like yeah. that. She just is, she's about to release a new book and it's called live your truth and other lies. And it mm. is all about like the messages that we see in the world that you know, cause us to strive and, um, and things like that. And one of the parts of our conversation that I loved, I pulled a quote from the book and she said, I think one of the best forms of self-care is knowing our identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. And we had a whole, a whole conversation about that. I have thought about that statement so many times since our interview last week and I think even in this conversation of rejection, it's applicable because sometimes a rejection can feel, you know, so small that we don't want to share it or so big that we don't want to share it, or it can feel crushing many times because there's a denial on our part of two things. One, who God is yeah. and his character, like we started with in that foundation. And also as a result of that, what our true identity is. Yeah. And so I think, I think that's the other layer of, um, that foundation that we have to have in order to walk through rejection in a healthy way. Now we're all human and, um, that's, you know, in comes the need. I'm so sorry. Okay. 
So in comes the need for community, right? To have people to walk alongside us in that. But I think that's a huge piece of it too, right? Is, is not know, not only knowing the character of God, but also knowing our identity in Christ. I, I would, yeah, I, I'm going to take it a step further. I feel like if we don't really know who we are, we can't care for ourselves well. Yes. Because, I agree. you know, the, I use an analogy of like a car, you know, like what's your favorite kind of car? Like, I'm like your dream, your dream car. Oh my goodness. I'm like, so not a car person. Mm -hmm. I'm like panicking because I don't know. Tell me yours. I don't really have a dream car either, but like I I drive a Volvo. (laughs) I'm such a mom. So there's like a newer Volvo, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, perfectly clean because mine's like 12 years old. So I think about that, like bright, shiny new car versus like an old beat up car. And I think we see ourselves as that old beat up car. Versus that like really beautiful work of art, that masterpiece. And so I think rejection comes in and tells us, no, you're really that. And if you were that, then you wouldn't have gotten rejected. So be better oh, that's so good. and make yourself into that. Not realizing that that's already who we are. Yes. Yes. That is already who we are in that moment. When you experience the rejection in the middle of the night, when you're struggling to make peace with it. When All of those out. times, three a.m. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, again, we're human, but also knowing that we're going to experience rejection, and knowing that those feelings of of fear or insecurity will maybe come before or after. Knowing where to go mm-hmm. is the important part, right? Totally. So knowing the right things to run to. I think that's, that's what we're getting at throughout this whole conversation. What are you running to? Are you running to the Lord? Are you running to scripture and spending time in the presence of God? Are you running to people who are safe to share with who and what are you running to? And so how do we point ourselves to those things so that next time, because there's going to be a next time we we know where to go and we know where to turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say the flip side of that is, are you going to social media? Yes. Are you withdrawing? Are you numbing? Are you isolating? Are you, you know, is your internal critic, your inner critic just running rampant? Are you feeding on lies? Yeah. Just feeding on the truth. I love it in Proverbs in the message translation. It says that our words are either fruit or poison. Mm. And Mm -hmm. you think about that when, when, when we're rejected so often, we begin telling ourselves just poisonous lies Mm -hmm. versus feeding on that good, sweet truth that will feed our soul. Yes. And another passage that's so good. Another passage that I talk about in the book in terms of our thought life is the passage in Philippians where Paul talks about, um, you know, is it true? Is it lovely? Mm -hmm. Is it worthy of praise? all of those things, think on these types of things. And it may sound a little mechanical, but like putting those things on paper and thinking is, is what I'm thinking about in terms of this rejection. Is it praiseworthy? Is it good? Is it lovely? And what do I know to be true about God and true about my circumstances in the midst of this? That is those things. How do I, it's a paradigm shift, right? Every time. Mm -hmm. And so again, where are we turning in the midst of that? So that's that's so so good. good. So good. I know in one of my seasons of life where I struggle with, you know, depression and anxiety off and on, depending upon life and, you know, cycles and just a lot of different factors. And this was about probably 13 years ago. And I remember, do you remember like Bambi where they say, if you can't say anything nice, yeah. Don't say anything at all. Yeah. So I just, I, for whatever reason, I felt like God was saying, if you can't say anything nice to yourself, write down scripture. Yes. And so I literally went to like biblegateway.com and wrote down every translation with scriptures mm-hmm. about anxiety, because I'm like, if my mind is going to run rampant, mm-hmm. you know, and that's, that's when so I, good. that's when I came across those scriptures that we know as believers but like second Peter five, seven, cast all your cares on him. And then the message for he, he is most, for, for he is most careful with you. Ugh. And so, you know, I, you know, it can feel like such a, 
um, band aid to say, go to scripture. And so you and I aren't saying that in a Christianese platitude kind of way, but it really is rooting yourself in the word. And I know for me, my journal has been that safe place to go to before I can even think about going to anybody else, even my husband, like I have to be honest with myself about what's hurting me because I want to minimize. I don't want to like cause a stir. I don't want to feel bad. I want to get over it. Um, And so I think whenever we can get alone with the word, God's Mm -hmm. word and our own thoughts and writing that down, it's almost like having community with our own soul Mm. to then have healthy community with other people. That's so good. That's so good. I love that. I think those are all really good steps. And so, I mean, if I'm listening and I've just experienced a rejection that feels really crushing, I mean, in summary, right? Like, where are you turning? Do you know your identity in Christ? Mm -hmm. Who are you running to and who feels like a safe person in that? And have you, have you processed with the Lord individually, even before, even before you go to that other person and, and in the opposite way, what, what boundaries need to be in place? Where are you turning that you need to not be turning Mm -hmm. in the middle of this? That's just as important where not to turn is just as important as where we need to turn. Totally. And so, yeah, I think a lot of this we've discovered along the way, but those, those Mm -hmm. are some of the things that I think are just so crucial. So let's we'll just co-write the book together. How about that? Yes. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like there's anything else that we haven't hit that you feel like, Ooh, that's a little nugget that somebody needs to hear. Oh man. Or a final word of encouragement for somebody going through rejection. Yeah. I, I just think that so many times we so desperately want to know what God knows. And I know we've talked about this a lot today, but remembering our place in the kingdom and, and what we know on this side of heaven and trusting God with the in-between is, is where we're going to be on this side of heaven. Right. And so making peace with that. And, um, again, just pointing ourselves back to truth and, and that specific truth that I don't necessarily have to know all the behind the scenes and know the why, and I might not know till heaven. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's one of the pieces that we haven't many times worked through in order to be able to work through rejection Mm -hmm. in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. So that's so important. Yeah. And let's maybe just leave it with Lisa Turker's words, live loved. Mm -hmm. And whenever we get rejected, it's easy to live unloved or to live with shame, but know that you're loved and who you are is good. Yes. And who you are is worthy. And there's nothing that can ever stop God's plan. Yes. There's nothing that can, there's nothing that can keep it from happening. And yes. one of my favorite, favorite, favorite scriptures is that God will do increasingly more than your wildest dreams. Ephesians Again, the message. 320. Uh-huh. Yeah. More than you could ever hope for. And I think sometimes to, to know that to, to search within yourself for that desire. Yeah. And to bring that to God and to foster that plant yeah. and to grow that plant, not knowing yet what that might be. Yes. Rebecca, where can we find you and where can we follow along and engage with you? Absolutely. So I am the most active on Instagram. My handle is Rebecca George author. I'm a CCA Rebecca. So you can find me there. I also host the radical radiance podcast. We have episodes that air every Tuesday. So I'd love to have you over there. And like we talked about, I have a book releasing next April. So I am so excited (laughs) to be able to share about that. It's a little early when we're recording this. You'll be back. uh, You'll be back. I can't wait. So yeah, that's where you can find me. Perfect. Thank you so much.